Hello. My name is Colin Breedenberg, and today I'll be introducing you to two new learning algorithms that have been used as normative models of synaptic plasticity in the brain, weight perturbation and node perturbation. So consider the following setup. We have a neural network or brain that is receiving inputs X, which are being fed uh, into a neural network layer by synaptic weights W to create a neural network activity denoted by R. This neural network activity is then mapped through some complex function f, which we may not have access to, to produce outputs y hat. Finally, the performance of the network is evaluated by a mean squared error between the network out and target y. In the brain, synapses w have access to only information that is locally available to them, meaning that much of the rest of the brain is inaccessible. Under these conditions, how can we modify our synapses w so that the loss decreases? The naive approach and the default for machine learning would be to do gradient descent. In this situation, the parameter update delta w is given by the gradient of the loss function with respect to w. Calculating the gradient through the chain rule reveals that in order to calculate the parameter update, we need to understand how changes in neural network activity are um, change our black box output function f, meaning we need access to the Jacobian of the output with respect to the fire rates. As we'll see in subsequent sections, this Jacobian is something that a single synapse could not conceivably have access to without some clever approximations. But before we get into those details, we can first ask, can we approximate the gradient of our loss function in other ways that are uh, that use information that's more likely to be available? To us? So, Let's now consider an alternative way to estimate the gradient of loss function called weight perturbation. At a high level, this method adds Gaussian noise to the synaptic weights in a neural network and measures the resulting performance on the loss function. If the loss improves, the weights are updated to become closer to the perturbed weights, whereas if the loss decreases, the weights are updated in the opposite direction. So more concretely, our parameter update delta w is given by this function where eta is our learning rate, and we can estimate this expectation as an empirical average over noise samples, psi k, like so. Here, we're correlating changes in our loss, which is, okay, so our loss with noise, mining, minus our loss without noise, with changes in a single parameter update, wij. So we're measuring wij prime, which is the perturbed weights relative to the original snap weight. And it's worth noting that far less information is required to perform this up. We only need access to scalar information about the performance, which is known to be encoded by neuromodulatory signals like dopamine, and which is known to modulate synaptic plasticity in the brain, and the strength of the synapse itself, which is information locally available to any individual synapse. So now that we have our update rule, why should we expect it to work? We can understand this both graphically and with math. Starting with the math, we can begin with one observation. The noise that we are adding to our synapses is small, so we can tailor expand our loss about the point where the synaptic noise is zero. Plugging this into our update equation, we have the following, where the dot product between the loss function of the synaptic noise, psi, is correlated with the noise in the synaptic weight, wij. Since all noise terms are independent from each other, the only non-zero term in the expectation is the derivative of the loss with respect to the weight, wij which recovers gradient descent. So our algorithm is approximating gradient descent. Pictorially, this parameter update corresponds to the following. We're adding noise to our parameter about the point wij, which produces many different losses, these individual dots here. As we can see, by estimating the correlation between the changes in our loss and the changes in our parameter wij, we can get an estimate of the slope of our loss function with respect to wij. This is exactly what our update is doing. Now, as we'll explain in more detail in a subsequent video, weight perturbation is extremely inefficient because it requires averaging over perturbations to n squared synapses. One way to fix this problem is to perturb neurons instead of synapses. This method is called node perturbation and the principles are very similar. So now we're adding Gaussian noise to our firing rates R and taking the following update, which we can again approximate as a sum over k independent noise samples, psi. Unlike weight perturbation, there are two locally available terms, changes in the firing rate of neuron RI 
and the presynaptic inputs the neuron XJ. As a consequence, this type of plasticity is called a reward or loss modulated Hebbian plasticity rule, or alternatively, a three factor plasticity rule. This update is an estimate of the gradient for much the same reason as for weight perturbation. We start by Taylor expanding our loss and plugging into our parameter update equation. The only term that remains after taking expectations, similar to weight perturbation, is the derivative of the loss with respect to neuron Ri. And we can see that the uh, presynaptic term, xj, is just the derivative of the neural activation Ri with respect to parameter wj, as seen here. So using the chain rule, we can see that our update is really just in the same way as with weight perturbation, an estimate of gradient descent. So to summarize, we've investigated two new learning algorithms, weight perturbation and node perturbation, which, through the use of perturbations to explore how synapses affect network performance, end up requiring less information for updating the parameters of individual synapses than ordinary gradient descent. For the rest of the tutorial, you will implement these algorithms and compare their relative performance and efficiency, both empirically and mathematically.